Hi guys. Hello and welcome to Mr. Zagari's A Push YouTube channel. If you're watching this, then the summer's over and it's September, but don't fear. Now I'm not Mr. Zagari, I'm Mr. O'Hagan, and I'll be a regularly contributor to the videos you watch on this channel, but normally this is Mr. Zagari's house. So I'm coming to you from the second floor situation room. Um, most of Mr. Zagari's videos will take place in the underground bunker, bunker um, so you'll get used to that part of it as well. Uh, he and I hope that you rely on these videos during the year and that you use them at the beginning of each unit. Um, they're a good way to get introduce you to the content of the unit. Um, you can use them at the end of each unit as a review for our exams. Um, and certainly, you want to think about using these videos as you prep for larger exams. If we had a quarterly, for example, um, midterms, if we have midterms again this year, we didn't have them last year. Not really sure where we're going this year. Um, and certainly the AP exam in May, you'll want to do some review for that bad boy. So these videos will be a good way to go back to earlier units and try to get a handle on them. Today's first video is a way to review uh, what is chronologically anyway, the first part of your summer reading and to introduce to you the content outline that's provided by College Board for the course. Um, and these are kind of broad statements that have um, uh, the actual content material contained in them. And they'll be, you know, the, the kind of stepping stones, the foundations for the topics that get asked on the exam. These are broad statements that require you to come up with details underneath. You can almost think of them as being part of an outline that you would then have to fill in the specifics. All right, so we're not learning the course material here today. We're simply providing kind of a big picture overview. So let's start, and let's get rolling. I'm gonna present my screen here so that we can all be looking at the same presentation. All right, so you should be seeing this unit one, 1491 to 1607. Well, that date obviously is because that's the year before Columbus. And then we end in 1607 because that's the first permanent British settlement in the New World. So this unit one is really more about the early exploration and settlement of North America. So you're going to see a lot of things in here that look familiar from your gloriously happy days in global. All right. Uh, as you can see on the feature here, what we're really focusing on and a concept the College Board wants to pay a lot of attention to is this idea of distinctness and diversity. We mistakenly talk about American Indian culture as though it were one monolithic culture. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, Native Americans were a very diverse group and their geography plays a big role in that. Living in the Southwest, as opposed to the Great Plains, as opposed to the woodlands in the East, all of those have a really distinct impact on the lifestyle of those Native groups. All right. Um, and of course, that's going to be something that's highlighted, as you can see here in the content outline. So look at point B, right? Societies responded to the aridity of the Great Basin and the grasslands of the Western Great Plains by developing largely mobile lifestyles. There's your, your teepee, you know, and the ability to move from place to place. Letter A, talking about how present day Mexico and the American Southwest, you know, had very comparable lifestyles as a result of their shared climate, the Northeast and California and so on. There's, you know, it's important for us to remember that the geographic diversity of North America and South America play a big role in the cultural, economic and social diversity we find in these various Native American groups. The Iroquois Confederation lived a very different lifestyle than did the Apache or the Aztecs or the, the Mandam um, in, the, in the American West, almost Northwest, okay? Um, one of the most important features, of course, of this unit is what we have come to call the Columbian Exchange, as in Columbus. Columbus kind of breaks down the door. I've always said that we remember a lot about Columbus and maybe the thing we forget which is most important, it's not that Columbus got to the New World, it's that he got back. What Columbus did that really set him apart was he mapped out the route to make it easy to return home. I know he's the first man in the world to write down the directions, but that was essentially the moment where the door was now open, where that, that pathway to get to the Americas and to get back 
became something that other explorers could do. And we can see the massive amounts of exchange going on here. We can see the products that end up going to Europe and the things that come from Europe. And this is really you know, kind of a defining moment in, it is maybe the defining moment in world history, two separate hemispheres that now will be joined without, not, not without some problems, but, but clearly it's this exchange that really alters uh, the course of world history. Um, for the Europeans, it, it put them in a position that they had previously not been in, which is advocating this, this superiority by, by claiming the lands in the new world north and south america they were surpassing previous empires in other parts of the world that really kind of put them to shame you know the technology that the europeans had by this point the 14 and 1500s was just about starting to catch up with places like china and the middle east um and this element uh this this time period i should say is really going to be what sets the the Westerners, the Europeans apart. And it also leads to a great deal of competition between Western powers to try and race to get these, you know, these advantages. Boy, isn't that one that we always see in all of our studies of, Euro of, of European exploration, glory, God, and gold, their motivation for wanting to come to the new world, um, really opens up the door for trade around the world. And, you know, these are just some of the trade routes and what it does. We're talking about the opening of the new world, but we're really talking about in terms of world history is the better part of 400 years, almost 450 years up until World War II of European domination of the world. That's what this Columbian exchange leads to in a very selfish perspective. It leads to something very, very different for the native people of North and South America. And why does this happen? Well, the Columbian Exchange happens largely because of the technology and the improvements within Europe itself. Uh, the astrolabe, which is an old instrument being used much more efficiently and effectively to help with uh, navigation on the seas, the development of, of the Caraval ship, which was a much faster ship, uh, much more seaworthy, uh, much more navigable. It really allowed them to use the trade winds um, and and make these vast voyages across the ocean, I, I wouldn't ever say easy, but make them reasonable now. It's still fair to say that hundreds of ships over the years um, were lost at sea. So it was still a very risky voyage, but it now became a more doable and manageable one. And not just the technology guys, but the developments in other areas, things like the joint stock company, which really alters the ability of uh, nations and individuals to really lead the charge to settle these colonies. You know, sometimes you'll see historians refer to this time period as the commercial revolution. And that's an important term because it reminds us that there's just as much going on that really alters the world in terms of economics as there is in terms of nautical technology. Okay. Of course, the Spanish starting with Columbus, are thought of as being the first great power in the New World. Um, their relationship with Native Americans is a very, very um, troubling one, troubled one. Um, certainly, even today, the debates that happen every year in October when Columbus Day is being celebrated, uh, New York City, um, if you remember, was, was toying with the idea of eliminating the celebration of Columbus Day and making an Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, I forget what the outcome was. We'll see in October. Um, but the fact of the matter is that it really reflects this ongoing problem and the legacy of Spanish colonization, especially in South America. Remember that the Spanish were less present in, the Amer in North America, although the American Southwest and Florida were part of their, um, their, their empire. We think of the Spanish as really being in Mexico and South America, where the Spanish language is so prevalent today. And it's the encomienda system that uh, we associate so much with the Spanish. It ends up being a very rigid social structure. Um, and of course, it's during this era that we see West African slavery coming in and replacing the, uh, the, the Native American slaves. Uh, the, the Native Americans, of course, were the first ones to be enslaved. And when they died in enormous numbers, practically 
uh, you know, wiped out in some respects because of the diseases being introduced. The Europeans mistakenly thought that they, they just weren't adjusted to the climate and they weren't used to doing this kind of difficult work. Obviously, their scientific knowledge leaves a great deal, deal to be desired. They started to replace the um, Native Americans with Africans. And of course, that that transatlantic slave trade is another very, very troubling legacy that we're going to see. Let's not lay this all on the Spanish, by the way. Um, as we'll see later, all of these different European groups at one time or another engaged in the slave trade. Even the French, who we'll see later, who didn't use slaves in any large numbers, they did participate in the actual trade of slaves from Africa. Um, another legacy that is still very much alive and, and part of uh, the difficulties that many countries in South America face is this very rigid class system that came up based on blood uh, and based on this idea that you were more desirable at a higher level in society depending on your blood. Um, and, you know, that that kind of differentiation, segregation, let's use that word, segregation based on blood and based on color, that's a legacy that we still suffer from, not just in South America, as we'll see, and, and I think we all know very well, it's still very much a part of the American conflict. Um, and I think that's what we're looking at here, right? We're looking at a legacy of conflict and crisis. Um, in addition to all of those really distinct and unique improvements that came along, that Colombian exchange is fraught with a tremendous amount of, of death, of destruction, of altering of lives. In addition to all of those grand views that we have of how the world changes, of how we made the world a smaller place, um, and you know that's that's part of the the negative and the positive that we see in any of these cultural exchanges. The old term in global history, global studies, is cultural diffusion. Remember that one from ninth grade? Well, when you have cultural diffusion, invariably one people's beliefs is going to be subjected to another people's beliefs. And that's what we see with this back and forth between Native Americans and Europeans and the, the advent of African slavery. Um, there's a very troubling uh, attempt to bring all of these people together, but to bring them under, you know, bring them to heal under the European model. Uh, and as we'll see in the next unit, it's not just the Spanish, but it's the English, it's the Dutch, it's the French. Everybody has their hands in this and their relationship with the Native Americans, their responsibility for the slave trade, um, it varies, but nobody comes out of this clean. Um, and as we'll talk about, as we go throughout the course, you know, when we, when we ignore this kind of history, we have a lack of understanding of problems that exist today. Um, for somebody to talk about racial difficulties in the United States in 2021, and not realize the legacy and the history that goes back, what are we looking at here, four or 500 years ago, um, they have an incomplete picture. And that's what we want to avoid in our course. We want to avoid incomplete pictures, all right? I think what you see here, guys, is a, a real sense of what this course is designed to do. It's designed to give you this content outline so that you get a much broader sense of how the unit is going to be covered. All of those bullets that I went through uh, and all the bullets you see, and this will be posted, this is posted, so you can go back and look at it at any time. Um, so Gary and I are going to use those content outline points, and we're going to use those as kind of a guideline as we go through, almost like a lamppost as we go throughout the course, because those are major concepts. Those are the things that we want to constantly go back to. And that's what College Board is going to do, too. Let's let's boil it down to the thing that, you know, uh, that we're probably concerned with most for, for many students, and that is what's going to be on the test. Well, it's these concepts, guys. They build the test around these bulleted terms, these concepts. Um, and for us, it serves the purpose of giving us a starting point for each of these units. All right. Hope this was helpful to you. Um, we're going to do more of these videos as the year goes on, but our early units, especially since you did most of that as summer work, um, we're going to rely on that effort that you put in during the summer to cover those. Um, and at the end of the 
course of, uh, you know, without a doubt, we'll come back to a lot of these concepts and, and certainly we'll be touching on them as you go throughout the year. So my hope is that you got something out of our first video and that you continue to use the YouTube channel that Mr. Zagari has put together throughout the year to help you with all of the work that we're going to be doing. Okay. Glad to be able to break you in. I hope you enjoyed the first video. Um, and you definitely want to use this one to help you prepare for our double quiz coming up for your summer reading. All right. Stay well. May the force be with you.